All right, so we're going to redraft the 2016 NHL entry draft, see where Pierre-Luc Dubois falls, see who the Canucks end up taking at fifth overall. We know this exercise has been done before, but this is with the complete benefit of hindsight up to this current date. And let's see who we come up with. Okay. First 15 picks. First 15 picks. Yes, you should. Well, I should have said that. First overall, Austin Matthews. Don't. With the first overall pick oh, of the 2016 NHL entry draft, the Toronto Maple Leafs select P.L. Dubois. <laughs> Stop. Be serious. Okay, it's, it's Austin Matthews. Is this how you feel with me when I do that to you? Yes. Oh my goodness. That's annoying. Well, would you not want to send Dubois to Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Good, good take, Arm. Okay, so Austin Matthews, Wait, number you one. you guys forgot to thank the uh, previous Stanley Cup winner and the current draft host for their nice hospitality. <laughs> no, and I forgot to mention uh, Matthews is from Scottsdale. Come the on. The best thing about Patrick Alvin is he walks up to the stage and just says the player's name. Like, I like, love it. If, if he could, he wouldn't say the player's team name. He wouldn't. Say, he would just say the player's name. That was that was it. If it was up to him, I'm sure. Or he'd just say the pick is in. The pick and just is like in. leave it up to everybody else to figure out <laughs> who it is. Check NHL Central Registry. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, number two to Winnipeg, not Patrick Line. Adam Fox. I have Matthew Kachuk. I will take a number one defenseman. Fair enough. Who's won a Norris Trophy Ray over. Uh, a winger. How technical do we want to get? D- does Adam Fox sign in Winnipeg? We have the full benefit of hindsight, and I didn't want to have no, to do okay, this. No, okay, I don't to want to get into that. No, we don't no. have to get into that. You're right. Purely based on talent, sure. Adam Fox might be too. I think there's a good case to be made for Matthew Kachuk as well, who obviously has you know proven himself to be quite the playoff performer. And I don't know, man. I'm just thinking about this Jets team, and you know, obviously, right now they could certainly use another 40 goal scorer and a power forward, the guy who fits the bill of Matthew Kachuk. And I know he's not having maybe the best season right now, but I'm going to stick with Matthew Kachuk at number two. Number three. By I, the way, I should we should also clarify, at least from for my purposes, I didn't look at which team owned what what pick and was drafting based off need or anything. I'm just going purely totally, off players. Totally. Yeah. I'm I'm just talking with the full benefit of <clears> hindsight <throat> and where these players are at now and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Columbus, I've got Adam Fox, number three. Uh, I've got Charlie McAvoy, number three. Again, I I think McAvoy is on the fringes of, I don't think he's quite top five defenseman in the league, but definitely top 10 because sure, he may not have the splashy point totals, but defensively, he's one of the best shutdown defensemen in the NHL and he can still chip in like at 52 points in 67 games last year. Um, on pace for 62 points this year. If you've got a guy that can put up 60-ish points and give you elite-level defense, that's a guy you build an entire blue line around. Uh, I'd take that over a winger just because I think I put the positional premium on centers and um, defensemen usually. Corey Anderson in the YouTube live chat, quads with the hot take. A team could use a 40-goal power forward. <laughs> Corey comes for my hot takes every day. And folks, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find us at 2 p.m. live on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. Make sure you hit subscribe. We do this show live. We interact with our listeners. Let's keep going with this segment here. I had Charlie McAvoy number four uh, to Edmonton. Number four. You have Matthew Kachuk, yeah. I hope. Okay, Kachuk, good. Yeah. So you have Matthew Kachuk two spots lower than I do. So there's our first real disagreement. Number five to Vancouver. Who falls? Clayton Keller. I also have Clayton Keller. Clayton Keller is a Vancouver Canuck. If you do a redraft, especially Calgary? because yeah. like he doesn't play with other star talent. So for him to put up the point totals that he does, I think yeah. he had like 86 points last year. What would he be in Vancouver? He'd be knocking on the door of 90 to hundred points. And of Easy. course he's the 39th overall pick in this draft. And I think it was Sam Wilson that brought it up. Someone brought it up in the YouTube live chat. Yeah. Jeremy Lee. He said, 2016 is a weird draft. Many scouts got it wrong. You and I obviously were doing our homework for this draft. You look back, and one guy who's obviously going to get brought up on our list in the top 15 is Jesper Brat, who went in the sixth round to the New Jersey Devils. Unbelievable. I, Yeah, unbelievable that he ended up going that low, and the impact player that he is, uh, pretty crazy to look back on. Okay, number six to the Calgary Flames. I have Alex Dabrinkit. I have Jesper Brat. Oh, that high? I think, yeah, because I consider him a true play driver. Nice. I think he's somebody that can create chances on his own, whereas Dabrinkit, I love his goal scoring. He has unbelievable point totals, but he needs to play with somebody like Larkin to put those numbers up. He needs a prime Patrick Kane, like he did in Chicago, to produce those types of numbers, whereas yes, Jesper Bratt has also played a lot with Jack Hughes, but he can 
also drive play himself. Whereas I think Debrinket is more of a one dimensional um, finisher. Also, I think I jumped the gun. And when you were talking about Clayton Keller, I started explaining who Alex Debrinket is when I said, yeah, no, yeah. Is, okay. You were talking Keller about Clayton Keller. I don't know why I jumped ahead, but yes, I have Debrinket as well. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to have a disagreement here because you have brat a lot higher than I do. And we didn't look at each other's lists. Yeah, I, I had Brat lower, but I thought I think there's a serious case for Brat to be higher. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy, he's got 49 points in 46 games this year, uh, 32 goals and 73 points last year. It was around a point per game the year before. And again, I think he is the type of player that, whereas Dabrinkit probably in terms of overall impact isn't quite as valuable as the point totals would indicate. Yeah. I think Brat is a player who's probably a little bit more valuable than than the point totals uh, would indicate. Interesting. I want to change mine on the fly because I uh, I don't I don't know. Okay, let's go through it. Let's go through it. I won't change my list. I won't change yeah, okay. my list. But I think I may want. Yeah, to... I'm not allowing that. You got to stick to it. I will. I will stick stern. to it. Okay. Uh, Arizona has the next pick. I have Tage Thompson. Me too. Okay. About time. Buffalo. Mikhail Sergachev is who I threw down there. So I went back and forth on this. It's it's a coin flip for me between Hironik and uh, Sergachev. Yeah. I initially went Sergachev, then I flipped to Hironik. I actually did the opposite. I had Hironik and I went to Sergachev one spot ahead. See, here's the thing. Sergachev last year broke out as a legit num- number one yes. defenseman. Better than Victor Hedman. But then he struggled in the playoffs. Yep. And this year... He, I mean, he's been injured as well, but has struggled. I'm honestly torn on this. I don't know what the right answer is. I, I'll lean towards Sergachev just because Hironik has the benefit of playing alongside Hughes right sure. now. And, yeah. and we haven't seen Sergachev. He has never had a partner of that caliber. Sure, and he had a way better team in Tampa kind of coming up after the draft as well. But then you can also be like, well, Heronic's a right shot, and those guys are premium pieces in the NHL. So I think you can make an argument either way. I think I'd probably be more comfortable with Sergachev driving his own pair. Yeah. But Heronic's a better fit to to play alongside an elite defender like Sam Wilson. Hughes. Sam Wilson bringing it back a few picks here. He has a problem with us putting Tage Thompson behind Alex to bring it. Yeah. I, well, I didn't I don't have I haven't picked to bring it yet. I have. <laughs> so you went with the undersized goal scoring winger yeah. over the big strong I know. I know. know first line center. I know. It's like well, he's you, also one of the worst defensive players in the NHL. I know. Look and you look back. Plays on, but you yeah. Look back. Well, yeah, I mean, why do you think they're one of the worst defensive teams in I know, the NHL? I know, I know. Because Thompson is like awful defensively. Yeah, so there's 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 a case to be made in both places. It's it's interesting. It's an interesting conversation. I mean, I'm I'm more interested in your picks 10 to 15 because we're at pick number 10 now. Or no, we're not. We're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, we are at 10. I'm surprised Quads hasn't picked a goalie yet. No, no goalies. No there's goalies no, on the list. Oh, what we don't is have that? Goalies. I mean, who's making these rules? Yeah, I don't know. I'm you not taking have Philip Gustafson out around there? No. Nope. No. Carter Hart? No. Although, no. No, I'm not taking any goalies in this one. Okay. We're at number nine with the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, the teams don't really matter, <laughs> but the Canadians did have the ninth pick here. I went Philip Peronik. I know you did yeah. as well. Originally the 52nd overall pick in the second round yeah, uh, from Detroit. And again, them. you look at this draft, one of the most interesting drafts for us to dive into here. Colorado, I had Jordan Cairo. Uh, this is where I have to bring it. Okay. Do you have Cairo yet? I don't. I have him in my list later on, though. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm not I the had, biggest fan. I was about to say, oh, you have to bring it ahead of Kyrie, but then I realized I have to bring it about six spots ahead of Kyrie. Yeah. Uh, where I think I may, I may disagree a little bit is putting Kyrie behind Jesper Bratt. And I have Bratt right behind Kyrie, but just looking at what they've done in their careers to this point. And again, I'm also looking at the fact that Kyrie plays center. Oh, he doesn't? Right, yeah, he's he a winger. No, he's not. He's a center. Kyrou's a pure winger, dude. No, he's not. He is, dude. Why do I have this wrong? He's one of those hybrid types. 
what when has Cairo played center? He's listed on Hockey DB as a don't center. Trust now I have Hockey to DB. He's listed <laughs> everywhere. He's listed on NHL.com Dude, as a center. Now check his this. fantasy position eligibility. Fantasy. This is real he life. Plays, he plays. He plays right. Oh, he wing. has like ten faceoffs in his career. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's not a center. Drafted as a center, converted to winger, perhaps. Yeah. So with he's the benefit like, of hindsight, you he's like Connor Garland a size. So. With you think he's a center? He's Was listed it? at 6'1", 196. I know, but he's so light. He's so, a winger, trust me. So with the benefit of hindsight, you draft a guy to be center and he can't be a center. You're right. Jordan Cairo does drop a little bit here. Okay, so I had Cairo. Jesper Brat probably... It, Jesper Brat is my next pick at Ottawa's pick at number 11. Who did you have there? Or, excuse me, who did you have at Colorado? Oh, that was uh, Debrinket. Debrinket. Okay. Yeah. Who, do you, who do you have with Ottawa? I have uh, Chikrin. Chikrin? Okay. Yeah, I, I value the defenseman higher i know Cairo has flashy point totals but he's a nightmare when it comes to defensive play turnovers there's a reason why blues fans have turned on him re like wow. not only this year but <laughs> last season as yeah, well yeah. Uh, after he signed the big contract he's just not let me put it this way i wouldn't trust him as one of my face of the franchise type players i almost I like don't a see the, pl dubois yeah you, you might say uh, so I'll take Chikrin because I know Ottawa isn't having a good year, but Chikrin has actually been playing do you, well. <clears throat> do you, um, I don't know, do you take the, do you take the injury history as well into account when you're looking with yeah. the full benefit of hindsight? Also, there's no goalies. <clears throat> People were like, uh, well, someone in the chat, he's not in this draft, but they're like, Thatcher Demko deserves to be a top 15 pick in his draft. He's not in this draft, Yeah, but... That maybe this will be our offseason content is redrafting a lot of these drafts. We'll see if we continue uh, to do this. Okay, let's move on here. People are wondering why we don't have Patrick Line. Um, oh, th the there's redraft. a hot take coming up. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sam Wilson says Line still has 388 points in 480 games. And I hear you. So I've yes, we're brought to Ottawa. I agree. Too low. Should have been higher in mine. New Jersey, I've got Jacob Chikrin. Who do you have for New Jersey before we get to the next one? I've got Sam Gerrard. Okay. And people, I'm sure people will be like, oh, undersized defenseman. To me, he's a top four defenseman who drives play. And the fact that he doesn't put up huge point totals because he doesn't run a power play is actually a feature because he's not gonna he's not gonna put up the point totals to command a huge contract. Okay. He's always gonna be a player that he's locked up for five million now. Yeah. I think that's um, a great contract. Whereas part of the reason I have line A lower is because he's the type of player that he's completely one dimensional. All he does is score massive defensive liability, doesn't drive play, doesn't make any of his teammates better. But the problem is point and goal totals drive contract value. So he's always going to be the type of player that is going to make more than what he's actually worth. Yeah, I also have him as my next pick. I have him down uh, at my Carolina pick. So I'm one behind you. You've got Gerard one spot ahead. Uh, I've got Gerard there uh, with Carolina. So who do you have in the Carolina spot? At I, number 14 for those, or excuse me, 13 for those keepers. I've back. got I've got Kyrie there. Okay, you got Kyrie. I had Kyrie higher. Probably agree that I should. I, I definitely know I should have had Brat higher. And I know I should have Kyrie lower as well. Okay. Boston. This is pick number 14. This is where I have Patrick Line. I've got your boy PL Dubois. You have Dubois ahead of Line? Yeah. Okay. Actually, well, you I'll know take you know, I'll take the big bodied centerman yep. who sure he's not always consistent with uh his engagement, but he he's a two-way beast when he is engaged. We've seen it at points um in the playoffs. And I mean honestly. Yes, he's got this reputation now, but talk to any Jets fans about Dubois' tenure in Winnipeg. He didn't dog it. He mm -hmm. did not dog it in Winnipeg. Yeah, he didn't want to stick around. Got cold. Uh, but he was an effective force there, and he's consistently been a guy that, yes, he's having a down year now, but has pretty regularly put up 25-plus goal, 25 plus goals and 60 points. Big-bodied center. I'll take that over... Um, the one-dimensional sniper. Yeah, and you look at, especially with the benefit of hindsight, Line has broken 30 goals the last time, 2018-19. Hasn't done it since. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you're absolutely correct, actually. Um, that's probably where, as much as I love the bit of getting Dubois to the second round somehow, 
that is probably an appropriate uh, appropriate place for him to be taken. So Boston, Pierre Dubois, that fraud in a redraft goes 14th overall to the Boston Bruins. Minnesota at 15. Do you want to do you want to go to 15? Yeah, I. Is Liney completely out of your top 15? Well, originally it was, but then I was like, eh, am I being too mean? I was I was considering putting Brandon Hagel there just because I like those hardworking type mm, guys. Who, likewise. He's going to put up 64 points last year. He's going to be in 60 plus points. Plus he has speed, can kill penalties, good two-way guy, drives play. He's not going to be on, uh, he's not going to end up with a bad contract potentially like Line A is, but okay, I, I can't reach that much. At a certain point, Line A does score and produce so much that you can't overlook it so as much as i like hegel and was tempted by keep uh about the idea of keeping line a out of my top 15 entirely i don't think i can i'm gonna round up my top 15 with line a line a is your dubois yeah like, yeah, yeah this is awesome is. we found the two players i don't like dubois you really don't like line a i had brandon hegel um and Michael Essimont, or however you say But his also, name. <laughs> like, Line f- wanted so badly to do the Tej Thompson thing and switch from wing to center. He was awful at it. Yeah. And I'm just like, why were you so adamant about wanting to switch to center when at wing you're one of the worst defensive players in the NHL? Yeah. yeah. You like, just hate video games harm. Just admit it. I <laughs> Big gamer, Patrick. Yeah, Lange. exactly. I, I hate his video game video game tendencies. Bad habits. No time Can't for Fortnite. Win with that. Yeah. I found, who was it? <laughs> who did I pull up that had the same birthday as me? That I was like, oh, you can win with a birthday like that. <laughs> who was it? It was right before the show. It was some name that shouldn't be mentioned. But he had the same birthday as me. I don't know why I can't Ollie remember. Levy. <laughs> Wait, was it Sam Gerard? No, it wasn't Gerard. Yeah, so of course, Ollie Levy goes fifth overall in this draft. I need to find it. Someone had the same birthday as me. Ryan Lindgren. There it is. He's a good player. Yeah, and he's got a birthday you can win with and some facial hair you can win with. Look at that mustache on Ryan Lindgren. Yeah, same birthday. Although, different year by two. Anyways, okay. Honorable mention to Ross Colton, says Sam Wilson in the chat. Yeah. 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 Oh, also, here's here's one for, for both of us to weigh because the two players we dislike. PLD for seven more years or line A for two more years? <laughs> line A. I'd have to really think long and hard about that because so line, hardest thing to do in the NHL is to score goals. And he went to Columbus when he had John Tortorella as his coach, and they've been a disaster the last few years. Look, I'm not praising him by any means, but I just think shooting talent alone, especially how good he was when he came in. And he's you got some contract flexibility there. So you think so? So you would take Line A, Grady? Is what you're saying? You would rather have Line A for two more years than PLD mm. for seven? <sighs> I disagree. Coming into the season, I would have said Dubois. The, sure. The but now thing, that he's got that big price tag in term, I don't know. But now I'm also I'm going big brain galaxy mode here, and saying the cap's going up. There's mm-hmm. there's a world where the final years of that Dubois contract yeah. are like well, a steal. Kopitar is not going to be around forever, right? Yeah, I'm going Dubois. Yeah, me too. I'm Especially you, because you want Dubois. Line a can't stay healthy. Yeah. He's only played 18 games this year, only 55 yeah. games That's last year, 56 games the year before, and even in the shortened 56 game year, six game season, he only played 45 games. So the guy can't stay healthy. He's made of glass. That's fair. You got all that hindsight, all that hindsight. And I could have looked up Jordan Kyrie's faceoff stats. <laughs> Canucks conversation with Harmon and Quads every weekday at 2 p.m. Be sure to check it out on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. And if you missed it, go check it out on your favorite podcast catcher app.